Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're here with the Fey Enchantress and her uh, strange allies here, the Warriors of Chaos. So let's go ahead and take a look at the army compositions, and we can kind of talk about some things. So yes, indeed, this is a 2v2, uh, not from the tournament. This is just myself and Black Iron uh, testing out and practicing some different things. So this is not an actual tournament game, but I, I figured you guys would want to see it nonetheless. Uh, some of you may have seen this battle already on Air of Carthage's channel, as I did send it to him. I figured you guys would still like to see my perspective and can I get uh, my thoughts on things. So let's go ahead and uh, go over the army compositions very briefly here. So for Chaos, we've got three uh, <laughs> Marauder Horsemen who are about to get caught by these Dragon Princes out on the far side. Got a unit of Grail Knights, another unit of Grail Knights on the far side. Front line is four Peasant uh, Spearman Arms with Shields with four Pole Arms. We've got a Grail Relic, Fey Enchantress, two Grail Guardians. And for Chaos, we've got Chosen with Halberds, two with a single Sword and Board Chosen, three Chaos Warriors with Great Weapons with two Marauders with Great Weapons out towards the flanks, Archeon on foot with an Exalted Hero. And that's about everything. So uh, let's go ahead and jump the battle into full gear as we watch these uh, Marauders get absolutely destroyed by Dragon Princes and High Elf Archers. We've got one unit of Dragon Princes here, uh, three units of High Elf Archers, two Spearmen, three White Lions, two Phoenix Guard, Teclis on foot, and a Lore Master of Hoeth as well. For the Lizardman player here, we've got Chameleon Skink, two Skink Skirmishers, uh, we've got a few Skink Cohorts, some Saurus Spears, and one Temple Guard with three Feral Cold Ones, a Feral Carnosaur, and Crocgar, as well as two Pterodon Riders out on the far side. So, these uh, Dragon Princes, after uh, fending off those Marauder Horsemen are going to be facing against these uh, Dragon Princes here. Very nicely played Teclis, uh, dropping this Flaming Sword of Ruin here on these Dragon Princes. It's going to give them magic attacks to be able to cut through the physical resistance of these Grail Knights. So very nice play there from Teclis. Between Teclis, magic support, and the support from these Archers, these Dragon Princes are actually going to be able to win out in that fight that they would normally lose. Meanwhile, we've got the Death Star rolling up, uh, going to be pushing forward towards a Lizardman player. You can see these Chaos Warriors and Peasants kind of pushing forward here all together. Very, going to be very, very uh, powerful to use together. And the idea here with this build is, we, you know, uh, obviously Chaos doesn't have access to... Uh, let's see, they don't have access to uh, healing. And they also, a lot of their troops aren't immune to psychology, so you can see we've got the Grail Relic here, Icon of Devotion, giving immune to psychology to a lot of the units in this pocket, um, as well as, you know, buffing up their extra, giving them extra leadership and so on. Then once the mainline engagement gets underway, the fan characters will be draining and simultaneously healing a lot of these Chosen and Chaos, uh, Chaos Warriors and so on, so let's see how it goes. Got uh, these Grail Knights going to be caught out a little bit here by these uh, cold one, uh, feral cold ones. Probably going to get finished off here. There's only a few unit models left, so a little bit unfortunate. These other Grail Knights over on the far side are still relatively healthy. You can see I've been able to draw in this uh, feral, feral uh, Carnosaur here, and the Grail Knights are going to be getting a nice surround. They will do a lot of damage to this feral Carnosaur. Now also bringing in these uh, pole arms here to start doing that anti-large armor piercing. Chaos forces are rolling through, getting on these uh, temple guards here. Chosen with halberds are definitely more than a match for temple guards, especially with the support of the Enchantress around. Also pushing through, getting on these skinks with the uh, Chaos Warriors with great weapons. You can see they're definitely going to be cutting through here relatively easily. Chosen sword and board also coming in. Uh, and although these uh, Temple Guards will do a lot of damage to the Grail Guardians, if we bring the Grail Guardians in and help support the Chosen, we should be able to all together get some damage done. You can see uh, the Fan Chantress is also going to be coming here, getting that nice drain effect. As soon as she gets into melee combat, you can see all the units in this entire pocket are going to be drained, as well as get that minus 5 melee attack from the Mist of the Lady. So if we go ahead and look here um, at the Mist of the Lady effect... It is minus 5 melee attack in addition to causing damage, so very nice. You can see the high player trying to push forward. 
We've got a nice concave of peasants kind of blocking him up so far right here. It won't last for too long, but in the meanwhile, we're just kind of uh, ping-ponging these um, Grail Guardians back and forth inside this mainline engagement. You can see these uh, these Phoenix Guard here fighting desperately up against Chosen with Halberds and uh, Grail Guardians. They will do some damage to the Grail Guardians, but the magic attacks from the Grail Guardians and other stuff is going to make this pretty rough for them. Uh, occasionally dropping Favor of the Fae on these Chosen with Halberds. You can see they're up to 80 melee attack with that Favor of the Fae. Very, very strong stuff. Krokar sitting in here with the Halberds. Honestly, probably doesn't want to stay in here for too long. But, uh, yeah, you can see the High Elves are starting to push through a little bit on this side. A lot of my Peasants are starting to waver from that rear charge from the Feral Cold Ones. So more Phoenix Guard also pushing up and around the side here. This one's just about been dealt with. You can see Archaon fighting uh, with the... Uh, Man, Archaon is huge! Holy cow! He's fighting with the Grail Guardians, and he's chosen here, just giving these Phoenix Guard the business. Very cool stuff. A beautiful cinematic battle. Been able to push through most Lizardmen infantry here. There's just a few uh, that's kind of hanging around. Krokar himself has been routed off. Meanwhile, uh, the lady's still just in here draining these Temple Guards and so on, dropping that perpetual healing. Uh, a lot of the Chaos Warriors are getting relatively low, however these uh, Chosen with Halberds, Sword and Board Chosen, and the other unit of Chosen with Halberds are all still relatively healthy. You can see a lot of the Peasants have routed off here, going to be dropping that Earth Blood on these, uh, these here Grail Guardians. A little bit caught up on the Phoenix card right now, but that's okay, we're just waiting to clean up more of these uh, Peasants over here on the far side. You can see more White Lions pushing through, we're going to be using the Grail Guardians to kind of intercept them and uh, pin them in between the Grail Guardians and these uh, Peasants here, so definitely going to be a rough situation for them. Chosen here, just about finished off the uh, Saurus, going to be turning their attention over to the High Elf forces as well. But uh, yeah, the Death Star is underway in earnest. More Flaming Sword of Ruin on all of these units in, our po in the pocket for us. Just going to give magic attacks uh, for taking on the Phoenix Guard. If there are any Dragon Princes here, of course, they'll be uh, mostly immune to the fire damage, but the Dragon Prince has mostly been dealt with at this point. There's just a couple kind of hanging around here. Uh, it's mostly just the Phoenix Guard, uh, these kind of uh, High Elf Infantry, and the uh, Feral Cold Ones in this pocket here. So we'll grab some cinematic action as the uh, Chosen with Halberds fight these Phoenix Guard and just descends into absolute madness and chaos. I did see uh, Kamehameha Blast, so the ladies in here also supporting still. Very nice uh, fiery complication sweeping through the formation. Honestly, not going to do the most damage to armored infantry though. We're going to be dropping that uh, Commodore Cassandora, the bound Chalice of Potions here. Getting a nice drop just straight into Phoenix Guard here. Uh, some great damage done by the lady so far. Fey Enchantress, she's got 74 kills and racking it up quickly with that Mist Lady. So, a lot of these Isle forces are suffering pretty badly at this point. You can see uh, Teclis looks like he's dropping some kind of spell here, uh, or that Lord Master Poets rather, self-buffing with Wisdom's Wild Form. Slayer of Kings on Archeon puts him up to 889 weapon strength. And it looks like another Flaming Sword of Rune going to be dropped here, helping again magic attacks on all these Chosen and so on to help cut through the last of the Phoenix Guard here. You can see the balance power is tilting more and more in our favor uh, as things kind of start to uh, tilt here. So. Uh, the Death Star definitely looks like it's falling through. You know, the Grail Guardians and the Chosen have taken relatively little damage here, although the, a lot of Peasants and, uh, you know, Chaos Marauders have been downed. Uh, the Chosen with great weapons the Grail Guardians still all relatively healthy, cutting through these High Elf units and probably going to be finishing off Krokar. It's uh, very brave, if not slightly foolish, for Krokar to dive into this big blob of Chosen like this. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to learn his, his lesson, hopefully. We've got some uh, High Elf Archers rallied on the far side, but really, honestly, at this point, it's just a matter of cutting down the last of these Phoenix Guard here. You can see Chosen with Halberds and Peasants with Pole Arms. Both the same uh, same role, but va vastly different uh, levels of quality, of course. Who knows? Maybe someday uh, the, the Men at Arms with Pole Arms, you know, if they turn to the Chaos Gods, maybe they can be chosen someday, too. But... Uh, yeah, a little bit of strange allies here, but I think in terms of synergy uh, gameplay-wise, obviously it's not super thematic to have Plutonia and Chaos fighting side by side, but uh, they are very powerful together, of course, because of the healing that the uh, that the 
Bretonian Spring to the table, the Grail Relic, of course. Again, all these units in this pocket are immune to psychology, and these Chosen, despite having been fighting, you know, very pitched engagements against armor piercing troops for most of the game here, they're all still relatively healthy. Uh, racked up quite a few kills each in XP chevrons. So we'll go ahead and fast forward as we kind of uh, circle beat this Lord Master of Hoeth down. And that should be the last of the battle. Another nice fiery convocation going to come through. Again, just doesn't do the most against the armored targets. So, uh, yeah. Uh, very well played to our opponents. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that battle. Just going to be kind of mopping some last things up here. We've got uh, Pterodon Riders coming down as well now. So, things get a little bit desperate for the Lizardmen and for the High Elves. We should be able to carry the day here. So, very well played to our opponents. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that battle. It's uh, definitely a powerful combination, you know, having the healing and those strong frontline troops. You can see the lady herself uh, was able to get 135 kills. I call her the lady. It's actually just the fan chantress, but uh, Grail Guardians also each racking up an XP chevron, 83 kills, 51, uh, 74 on this unit of Grail Knights. The other one kind of got shut down, but uh, very, very good across the board. If we look at Black Iron's uh, Chaos here, we've got 136 on our count himself. Very impressive. I failed to catch, he got a burning head that killed pretty much all three units of archers there, so sorry I didn't quite catch that for you guys, but very nicely paid for Archeon. Uh, the Chosen as well, 92 and 96 kills with some XP chevrons to go around. Uh, very good stuff. Uh, Chaos Warriors obviously got some nice kills, mostly coming up against Skinks, but uh, for our opponents, uh, these Dragon Princes did very well. Uh, some of the White Lions traded cost effectively against Chaos Warriors, as did these Phoenix Guard against some um, Chosen, but... Uh, overall, just getting run over pretty hard by that Death Star. Uh, same with the Lizardman player here. Um, again, uh, 86 kills and XP Chevron on the Pterodon Rider. Pretty solid. 67 on the Temple Guard. But uh, yeah, just really light on the infantry and no caster either from the Lizardman, which is a little bit strange. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'm keeping it coming with more Total War Warhammer 2 content every single day. So stay tuned for more and we'll see you next time.